I just do the best I can. I feel that I'm learning to be the most authentic self that I can be. I'm becoming whole. So many of us, we weren't loved when we were young, we were sexually abused or raped, whatever it is, we split off. But what should happen is take the best part of yourself and incorporate that into your whole being. You have all those things in you. You have the wounded warrior, and you also have the warrior that's turned pain into power. I have ridden my sexuality along into my older age, and very happily so, and I'm grateful for that. And it takes courage and a willingness. And I think just what's important is to know that you don't have to stay sexually active. You can stay sexual. I've closed up shop, but I'm almost 85. We always have those vibrators that are getting more and more sophisticated every year. Boy, do I get sent a lot of vibrators. What matters is that we not assume that because we're a certain age, we have to stop being sexual. It can continue if you choose it to. It's all a question of choice. We should have a choice if we want to remain sexual into our 70s, 80s, 90s. I wrote a book about age. I interviewed people in their hundreds that were still sexually active in a way. And that's great, but that's not required. You shouldn't feel bad if you're saying, no, I don't think so anymore. We have to understand the issue about women being able to control their bodies, it's about power. It's the ultimate power. A wounded beast is the most dangerous, flailing about, but they're wounded, and that's why the patriarchy is scared, and we mustn't forget that. This is all a result of fear on the part of the men and women who are patriarchal. We cannot give up because we have 50 years of absorbing this right into our bodies, into our DNA, into our hearts and minds. We know what it feels like to have agency now over our bodily decisions. And we're not gonna ever get rid of that. We're not going back. We have to keep fighting and we will, we will find ways. Life is about the two things, a symbiosis between good luck and bad luck that you can't have one without the other. The luck you create today could change a life tomorrow. Have a lucky day, Phil. You too, boss. I think she's an example of female empowerment. She's able to be flexible. She starts off saying, bad luck is all bad. Seeing things in a very binary way, and she becomes, she's able to see that you can't have one without the other. You can't have silence without noise. You can't have life without death. And you can't have good luck without bad luck. If things don't go well, don't give up. Keep trying. The bad things that happen can make you stronger if you let them. If you don't let them destroy you, but you let them build your muscles. Just like you can turn bad luck into good luck. That's one of the main things that I would want young people to take away from the film Luck. Yahoo! <laughs> Sounds like a coyote call.